Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be building some of the LS S14 chassis that we're building for the 2023 season. We're working on the splitter for the front bumper. We've got this KBD bumper. Uh, it's supposed to be the last bumper you'll ever buy. Super indestructible polyurethane. It's really flexible and I don't like how the bottom of it has a slight sag to it. So we're building the splitter which also looks cool and uh, like in the case of fiberglass bumpers protects the fiberglass from hitting cones, uh, pieces of tires, stuff like that on track. Um, but we need a way to mount the splitter to the chassis and without going to the bash bar because we'd like it to come off separate. So building these plates here. So taking a measurement of my frame rail opening, height, width, and then I added a whip on here for some extra support. So this is going to fit on here like that so that we can weld it in. And just taking a guess, this was the first one I cut. We got the contour pretty close to match the factory contour and we're going to weld it so we don't really care about the little gaps there. It gives us uh, some filament area. And then on the back side of these holes, we're going to have nuts welded and that's how we're going to attach our splitter frame. These are available for purchase on our website, turn5fabrication.com. These are our flat patterns that we cut on the plasma table. We cleaned them up and now we're going to bend them for that lip. lips on there. We have our lefts and our rights. We're going to go ahead and weld nuts on the back sides of these so we can attach our splitter. These are N10 by 1.25 metric nuts with a flange. We have them tacked on here over our holes and now we're going to go ahead and weld them up. The reason why I like using flange nuts is because you can weld on the actual flange itself and it's not going to distort the threads on the nut. Prevents helps prevent cross threading um, and other cross threading things. So there we go. We'll let those cool down and we'll get them installed on the car. Our pieces have cooled down and just as I suspected, they fit great. So. Come on in closer, I'll show you what we've got going on. Where are you going? Here's our piece with the lip. We're just going to line it up in there, make sure everything's flush. You can get a square if you'd like and make sure that this is squared up. For what we're doing on this application, if it's off by just a little bit, that's okay. You're not going to notice. So we're going to set this in here. Try to make it as flat with the front. We're going to put a tack on here. Another tack here. And now our pieces are ready to be welded out. You could also get these without the holes on them so it just caps off the frame rail for a nice clean flush look.
Yeah, so we just bumped that weld going all the way down there. You'll notice that I was pulsing the trigger. That's just because I didn't want to get too much weld on there, too much filler, and it drip. We're going from thin to thick material and just trying to balance it all together nicely. We've got our splitter set at the level that we want. So now we have to build bracing for the splitter so that it supports it fairly evenly uh, so we don't have any like weird sags or breakages or anything like that. So we've got our piece of one inch square tubing, 14 gauge thick. We are putting it in our roller dies here and we're putting a slight arch in the center of it to match the arch that is in our splitter. We're going to go check how it fits our splitter and make adjustments as needed. <laughs> so this isn't bad for a first try. Um, I'm coming and checking our, our measurements. Um, the splitter obviously you know, has a little bit of a flat spot here, but that, that's okay. Neither here nor there. Um, so this is going to fit back behind the bumper like so back here. And then our roller is not going to be able to make a sharp bend here. We're going to use a different tool for that. So we're going to mark it out on here as best we can. And then we're going to go put in our other bender and we'll show you guys that here in just a second. Okay, so now we're over on the other bender, which is going to put a sharper radius on our bends here. Um, so we got a piece of square tubing set up. I've got it set to 20 degrees bend right now. Uh, we're going to try that and see how it works. Um, just because I didn't bring a protractor with me or nothing, so we'll bend it right quick and go test it. I can already tell that wasn't enough. Got it set to 35. So we're another 15 degrees basically to our 20 that we did. And that's a lot better looking there. We'll go take a look, see what it looks like. So this is what our 35 degrees looks like. Not really happy with it, so we're going to go ahead and add in the, probably another 10 to 15 degrees to that bend and get it to, to face inward some more. So cool. After some adjustments on the bends there and there, we've got a piece that I feel fits fairly nicely and is going to fit nicely behind the bumper, which is sitting on the ground over there. But basically, what we're What's going to happen is we're going to have some mounts come off of here vertically and then it's going to spider web itself outwards to brace to our tube here which will have bolts coming through it and then it'll all come off as one piece by undoing the six bolts three on each side and the whole splitter will come off of the car as one. I've cut this flat pattern out of my table. These three holes are going to match up to the holes that are on the frame rail box itself. Uh, it doesn't look like much and you're like, man, how is that going to work? We're going to go to the press brake and it's going to turn it into this. And I'm going to show you guys that process. So that Some people like to see metal bent. Um, I, I like to see it. It's cool. But this sits here. Gives some whole uh, height adjustability. Just a little, little bit of movement up and down. Or you could drastically change up or drastically change down. And then you have the mounting holes on here, which we will use bolts through onto the bottom side of the splitter and then eventually I'm going to have on our skeleton here a square tubing a piece that's going to run long ways with this and we're going to connect it all together. So let's go to the press break.
driver's side. So now we have our opposite leg for the driver's side and we know that uh, these are all the same height from the frame rail here and we've taken measurements from here to here and we know that the, the splitter on this side needs to come back up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and work on the skeleton for this some more and then we'll get all that tied in together. I have skipped some steps here but the splitter is mounted to the frame and the frame is mounted to the chassis and the bumper is just sitting on there for right now. The splitter here is super easy and cool for the fact that it holds the bumper up, keeps the bottom from sagging and if I have to pull it into a trailer or onto a trailer and the splitter is going to hit, all I have to do is reach in an impact or a ratchet, undo the three bolts that will be there, the three bolts that will be there, and the whole thing, the whole bottom, even if the bumper is attached to it and not the fenders, will remove as one piece. This also helps keep weight off of the sides of your fenders. If you have fiberglass fenders, people know about that. Um, and keep, like I said, keeps the, the middle of it here from sagging on the, the KBD. Uh, the fenders are going to get changed uh, to fiberglass. We just use metal fenders for mock-ups so that everything comes out to factory spec. Um, but what I wanted to show here was that how simple this is where the bumper is just in the place and can pop off both sides and the bumper comes off and that whole splitter assembly is just attached at those points. So the whole splitter and the whole bumper that's sitting on it can come right off easily. And this works great for fiberglass bumpers too. Uh, the KBD bumper is supposed to be the indestructible bumper that folds up if you load it on a trailer, stuff like that. However, I don't really care for that um, feature of it. Um, I mean, I, I like it, yeah, but the, the whole reason for this, like I said, is for the sag on the bumper. The, the front edge of the splitter here protects your fiberglass bumper from cones, pieces of tire, other debris that is in the way on the track. That is that. We'll get this all welded out, get it mounted. I have a couple mounting bolts here just holding it steady. And all it is is some, uh, some carriage bolts just for a nice smooth flush finish. We can do, um, we could put on there rub blocks if we have to, uh, things like that. So we'll, uh, we'll add a bunch of more mounting points along the steel just so it has some more durability.